you said, people have stopped drawing any kind of line between politics and government. Now, what does that mean, and what kind of line should there be? Well, I think the reality is that uh, that line is always hard to draw, but there is a difference between politicking and trying to appeal to one's base uh, in electoral terms, on the one hand, and on the other hand, actually just governing, running the operations of government. Uh, and what we saw over the last two weeks uh, was a very dangerous blurring of that line, where uh, the, the, for political purposes, uh, we were willing as a country to go uh, almost to the brink of uh, putting our full faith and credit on the line and, uh, and stopping the functioning of government altogether. And I think that's the, uh, the tricky spot here, is that, of course, there is no purity in government. But the question is, as citizens, can we, in fact, have a certain measure of full faith in the way that things operate every day in government and not treat it as just yet another football uh, in the constant uh, uh, political games? All right, let me... Well, I, th I don't think those are mutually exclusive. There, there, there is disgust, but because of the disgust, there's actually more engagement. Uh, and that's true on both the left and the right. Look, I think the, the reality is when, when Stephen was speaking a moment ago about the kind of encroachment of ever-growing and ever-larger government, uh, we can have reasonable debates in this country about what the proper size and scope of government ought to be. But we ought to regard those debates not as on-off, yes-no, uh, my way or we shut the whole thing down kinds of debates. And I think the, the danger of uh, the Tea Party argument that every new thing, whether it's Obamacare or something else, uh, is another slide down the slippery slope. Look, the bottom line for responsible citizenship is our job is to build steps on the slippery slope. It's not just to say, if you take one little step, it's, uh, it's down to oblivion and to tyranny. Our job is to figure out how do we negotiate these balances? How do we calibrate? And uh, if by temperament or even by ideology you are not wanting to calibrate or compromise, uh, then we're going to have a politics uh, of, as Beverly put it, perpetual crisis. Uh, I think so many people from both left and right uh, watching these last two weeks are ready for something different. They're ready to actually hear each other and see one another and not the caricatures of one another and try to figure out, well, where is it that we can uh, manage to uh, agree on the role of government and where we can't agree how can we recognize that to be a citizen isn't just a single-shot, sudden-death game? It's infinite repeat play, and you're going to win some, and I'm going to win some. All right, let me ask you. Is this some kind of evolving sense of, of common good that we're seeing, or is there a... Oh, how, do you, how does that fit into what we're watching? Well, look, th this is a question for us, for the viewers right now, to decide. This is not going to be a thing that either Speaker Boehner or President Obama waves a wand and says, we will now enter a period of civility and common cause. We have to decide as citizens what kind of tone we're going to set, what kind of engagement we're going to ask of ourselves uh, and our leaders. Uh, and I do think there's an opportunity right now, uh, even as the Republican Party figures out what it wants to be when it grows up, for all Americans of both parties to figure out how we can learn to talk to each okay. other and hear one another. All right.